Hello and welcome to a special episode on the Gamer Mom channel. We're going to be checking out Planet Coaster today. I hope you enjoy the episode. So here's our park. It doesn't look like much yet, but we are going to make it beautiful. This is one of the starting from scratch options, a challenge park. You can pick several different options, um, different environments like tropical or desert. We've chosen the deciduous option, which I think looks kind of nice. Just a really nice flat green space to build a park. So I'm going to kind of show you around, show you how to start a park from scratch. So here we have our entrance. We've already had a few people that have come up to this gate and seen that there is nothing here and said, well, screw that, we're leaving. <laughs> so we're gonna leave it on pause to build a few things before we let anyone in to check it out. Um, we've got a path here that has these little loops and swirls. We could choose whatever path we want. We could continue this type of path or we could have something different. I like the sandstone path. This blue one is quite pretty. You can also do plain black or black with the Planet Coaster logo. This one's nice, the flagstones, asphalt or wood. I think I'm gonna go with the uh, glossy black path for now. And then we can look at some of the other paths when we do um, things like ride exits and the queue. So I'm gonna open it up to a little bit of a bigger path, six meters wide. If you start out with a small path right at the entrance, that fills up really quickly. So it's nice to go a bit bigger. You could even go to you know, eight meters or even all the way up to 10, which is quite huge. Uh, maybe we'll do eight right at the beginning and then we can make it go a bit smaller. And you can have it go on a grid to kind of keep it, you know, keep it straight. So let's have it kind of go into the park a little bit before uh, we make anything. And then I'm gonna change the size to go down to six. I think what I'll do here is go off to each side, which we're gonna want the grid for. Let's deselect the grid so we can join this. Oh, are you gonna be a brat? Yes, you're gonna be a brat. Okay, I'm gonna control Z. And what I'm gonna do is have it narrow down to six meters. And then we can do a grid and get what I want. There we go, I want a nice T intersection. And I like to have these little hubs. So inside this hub and around the hub is where I'm gonna put things like um, shops, facilities, food, drink, gift shops, bathrooms, staff buildings, all of that kind of stuff. And by having it here as a hub, it kind of forces people to go around it, no matter where they're headed. So we're gonna make sure to create some paths heading off in all directions. And then what we do is have it, you know, head off this way and have some rides in between. And then we create another hub here and another hub here that kind of has people going around, getting some food, because we want to attract them to those kind of facilities. This is the medium option. There's easy, medium, hard, and harder. So we have started out with 4,000 bucks, but if we want to, we can take out a loan, which I recommend because taking out a loan, even though there's interest, it lets you have better rides, attract more people, and make money a lot quicker. Um, in terms of staff, like you're going to want at least one janitor, at least one mechanic, one security guard, several vendors, and that has a certain cost. So whether you have, you know, 200 people or 500 people, you're going to need kind of at least one of each of these and a few vendors. So having 500 people helps you pay for those people better than having 200 people, if that makes sense. So I do recommend taking out a loan. I'm actually going to take out a $10,000 loan which is the largest we can do. And that'll allow me to get some really awesome rides in here. So in terms of rides, you have choices of these type of rides, which are kind of stationary. That's it, you just plop it down, there's no building involved. Uh, test flight, I have found in my experience to be a really, really good one. It's very popular. 
So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it past the hub so that people have to go through it and go around one of the sides to get to it. But I'm going to leave it fairly close to the hub. We don't need a long queue for this one. There we go. And we'll have kind of a, a path come around and be near all of these shops. Uh, the shops, I often include like decorations. I've kind of made a few of my own. You can see the blueprints. Some of these blueprints are ones that came with the game, like this one, for example. Some of these blueprints are ones that I've made myself. Let's find one here, this Caribbean 2 shop. Uh, I really like the Caribbean look. So this is one that I've created myself. Pretty cute. Works well in a, in a tropical environment, but you can also have it in a regular environment. Um, and then I've also created some that are along like a castle theme. And I think that's what we're going to go with today is a castle theme. Um, here's a simple castle themed bathroom, for example. So let's say we put this over here near the ride. All of the decorations that are around this building even the building itself, the flag, all of these decorations, they're gonna add to the building's scenery. So we're gonna place an entrance and an exit. Let's have the entrance, let's have the entrance here. I'm gonna have it go by the bathroom. Place the exit, let's place the exit here and we'll try to spit it back out into the hub. So once we connect this, let's choose this one's nice, the stone slab. That'll go well with our castle theme. So let's have it do this and then connect. And you'll see that they have a little person at the end to kind of admit people and let them through and I guess take their money <laughs> when it's a ride that has a, a cost. Um, but these people aren't like other staff. You, you don't have any control over them and they don't seem to need breaks. They just stand there endlessly forever. Um, Maybe they're animatronics. Maybe they're not actually people. Well, let's say that, that seems a little kinder. I always like to leave room in my paths to have the, um, the fast lanes. You can see here, priority pass. You can place an entrance. It can't be right next to the entrance. It has to be a little bit, a little farther down. Let's put it, so here it's red, you can't do it, but then here you can. So let's put the entrance there, let's put the exit here, there we go, and then we can add a little path, there you go. So that's all we need for our ride. Um, these rides that you kind of plop down, you don't need to build anything, can still have um, sequences that you can change, so you could add an animation and have it do another loop, but I'm going to leave it as is, this is fine got good nausea which is lower than a certain amount so it's green which is the best that's what you want uh, fear is not too bad it's orange so it's kind of in the middle it's not great it's not green but it's not bad which will be red and same thing with excitement it's fairly exciting so we will open this ride and we're also going to decide how much we want to charge I usually run my parks with free entry so people can come in and don't have to pay for that. But then I charge, I'm able to charge a bit more for the rides. So this one I think we'll start out with 12 and then we'll watch and see if people feel that it's too expensive or not, we can change the price. Or if they feel it's a good value, we can increase the price. So you'll see here, this is the scenery rating. So it would have been zero, but with this little building here, we've got it at least to an 11%. The more we add, next to the queue, uh, the more we're able to increase that. So if we added like a little fountain or something, I'm just gonna put it down to see the effect. 61, so that would add quite a bit. That's not exactly what I want though. I'm gonna choose something else. Castle stairs, this is a nice little one. Shouldn't be too expensive, but it'll add to the decor. Let's stick that right there brings it up to 23. So we'll keep adding decorations. We're also going to have other buildings here, so that will help. 
So that's our first ride and we're left with $11,000. We do want to make sure to get some stores in here. So let's do those first and we'll see how much we have left over for hopefully a roller coaster. So we want some place to eat, some place to drink. I don't think we have any gift shops yet, do we? Let's see, custom. No objects research. So we can't put a gift shop yet. We're going to research that. I'll show you research a little bit later. Uh, we do have bathrooms, thankfully, so we're going to want to put one of those in. We're going to want a first aid um, station eventually. We don't need it right away. ATMs also need to be researched, and that we should do fairly soon because that allows people to take out more money when they run out of money, and then they can continue to spend, which is good for you. We'll also want to research an information booth. That's where they sell the priority passes. So each pass, I think it starts out at around 10 bucks. So people buy it and then it gives them access to um, skip some of the queue, which they like. So I'm happy they don't have to wait as long. So let's start out with getting some drinks and food. Check the blueprints. What I like to do for a lot of my blueprints is save them as empty blueprints. For example, this two by um, two shop castle framework. See how it's empty? That means I can add whatever I want to it. I don't have to be stuck with a certain amount of shops or a certain type of shops rather. So I'm gonna plunk that down and we'll have room for one food shop and one drink. Drink, all we have right now is Cosmic Cow milkshakes. So we'll pop that in there. We're gonna add to the building. Pressing shift will allow you to move it up and down. And pressing Z allows you to rotate. Let's put in some food. Chief beef is good. It's like burgers. Churia del Sol is a nice one. There's ice cream. It's with that. People always like ice cream. I'm going to hit shift again and pop that in. Uh, with shops, what I like to do is add signs to advertise them. It makes people more excited about going to those places and it can entice them to visit them if they weren't planning on it. Um, I'll show you how the search bar works. You can type here cow and it'll bring up just the cosmic cow um, signs. Uh, there's some that match, so let's pick some that match since we have both the milkshakes and the ice cream in the same place. I like these little ones. Uh, which side was which? Ice cream, I think, was this side. Boop. And milkshake was this side. How cute is that? Moo. So once we have these, we can set them to advertise the shop. Like this. And you can also put signs anywhere and have them advertise rides. Um, you can set a whole bunch of places to advertise. Like you could pick everything or you could just have one. So there you go. So there's our, our two shops. We have one food and one drink. We've got a bathroom. So those are the basics. Um, we'll hire staff once we kind of get the ball rolling. And those are kind of like the, the bare essentials that we need to have. So we have 10,000 left for a roller coaster. That's always a good ride to plunk in. People really like that. Um, this one is really nice. I just designed this recently, Gold Fever Mine Coaster. It has all green and it's not very expensive. It's only 4,100, uh, yeah, 4,124 bucks. So let's put this in. I'm gonna hit Z to rotate. Um, moving around the map, you use your right button, click and hold to go from side to side. Two buttons at the same time, left and right, will change your angle. So I'm gonna hit click and hold the right mouse button and then do two buttons to kind of be able to see what I'm doing. If you use your mouse scroll wheel, you can go in and out zoom. Uh, let's put it, yeah, here is good. You can always like have the, the roller coaster go over the path, which I find fun, like people get to go underneath. But I think for now we might just have it nick the corner and that's it. Uh, actually, yeah, okay, because the paths is, um, these, this is one's on the other side. So it's not coming here, it'll come around. Um, so let's get our paths connected. So you'll notice it's slightly elevated right now. To make it go up, 
you're going to want to press U for up, so that's easy. You can make it go once or twice. Twice gives you stairs. Once only gives you a slope. So I'm pressing J to make it go down, which is what we want for this to join up with the path. It's nice to have slopes whenever you can. Uh, sometimes you need stairs, but sometimes you can just have a nice slope. Um, I don't know. I kind of like to do that because then it feels more accessible. <laughs> I don't know. It, not that there's anyone ever in the park that has accessibility needs, but I can pretend they do. Um, I actually don't like this path. I don't like the color mismatch. It looks gray or brown compared to the black. So what I can do, I can either go back and delete or I can go over top. And it'll put them over top. But see how it's costing me money? So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go Control Z. I'm going to walk it all back. And I'm going to do it again in the color that I want. So for roller coasters, you can build them from scratch. Um, I, I obviously built this one from scratch. This is one of my designs. Um, so what you would do in that case is you start out with the station and you do some building. You can edit the track. Um, we're not going to do that. But for now, we're going to wait till we have a bit of money, and then I'll show you how to do that. So you'll see we have zero scenery rating, so we're going to want to add some scenery. This price is pretty low. We can probably bump that up. Let's go with 12 for now, but we can probably get to 15 fairly soon. And here we're going to want to change the settings to enable a full load. Um, and we're going to want to do a priority pass in a minute. Let me tell you a bit about waiting for a full load. So I want them to wait for a, a full load as often as I possibly can. You can set a time limit so they're not waiting like forever and ever. You can also take away that limit so that they are waiting forever and ever. Oh, is that not enough? Darn, we might have to go slightly more to the side. the path. All right, that's not too long. They might complain about waiting for a long time, but luckily this ride has a lot of seats and it's just one train. I like to do that as much as possible. Have it be one train, load everyone up, wait a good amount of time to try to get it as full as possible. So we're going to wait to try to get a full load. We're going to wait up to 90 seconds and that's game time. So not like their time, that's our time. It'll wait 90 seconds to allow as many people to shove on there as possible. And that will help things go a little quicker than just like if it only took half the people and then it took off, then these people would be waiting a lot longer. So we'll make this head all the way around. These ones, same thing. You can make them go up and down. Um, they take more. So that one I just had to do four. This one I only had to do like two and a half. So it's about half. So we'll connect this and then we are ready to open our park. So let's open it and then we'll decorate this a little bit. We're also gonna be waiting for this to be tested. So if we hit this, as soon as we unpause, it will test. Um, is our park open already? Opens eight till six, no cost to get in. Um, looks like it's open. So we'll leave it open. There's only one ride right now, so we may not attract too many people. Um, but while we're waiting for people to come in, we're gonna test this, we're gonna add a few decorations, we're gonna hire our staff. And then we also add, need to add some benches and garbage pails, which are to have. So let's do it, let's unpause and get started. So we'll watch for people. Here's our ride, it's testing. Why don't we use the camera so we can ride it too? This is lots of fun, I really like riding the rides, especially if I've built them. It's really good graphics, like it's pretty well done. That one has a tilt, so we go on our sides a little bit. You can like tilt the track. This one's just a nice, simple little, simple little ride. It's not too big. It's not too long, not too expensive, but people are going to love it. 
These little people that operate the rides are just like the ones at the end of the paths. Oh, look at all the people coming. That's excellent. Look at that. We're already popular. Welcome. All right, let's look for a staff building castle theme. Blueprint. Castle staff room. Ooh, it's huge. Okay, so let's put this near the, um, the path. And that will help us get some um, decoration points there. Oh, and we need to make an exit. <laughs> Whoops. And let's make the exit while we're here so we don't forget. And come right back to the hub. Okay, it should fit right in here. We don't need to have much um, wind up to the entrance. The staff are just gonna head right in and out. The reason I have more room here is that people are gonna line up to buy the food and there are often that many people lining up let's see what that did 29 it's a little better i'm surprised because yeah that has quite a few components um but i guess they're not very expensive because the price definitely affects the scenery rating the scenery rating if you drop down some expensive items it'll really bump it up okay so we've got our staff building this has been tested so we're gonna add some decoration to that and we're gonna add some benches, garbages, and hire some staff. But for now, let's watch all these people coming in. Welcome, why are you just standing there? <laughs> See, they're happy that it was free to get in. So when you click on guests, you can see all sorts of info. Some of them have special traits, like they're a slow walker or they're hungry or they are a penny pincher type character. They're, I forget what it's called. Um, sometimes they carry items, like they can buy balloons. So they carry those in their hands. Right after they've bought food or drink, that's gonna be carried around for a little while too. It'll list their rides that they have visited. It shows how much money they have or the group has, because some people will come in groups. This person is all by themselves. But these people look to be in a group, Adolfo, Raymond, and Loren. So that's how much money they have all together. So that means every time they go on a ride, it's going to be times three. So we'll put this here for now. And then people can look at it from our, our path. Let's do, let's do that. So let's see, that brought it up to 34, so that's good. Uh, what you can do if you want is to filter by tags or packs. So if we say like, uh, I don't think we can say castles, but we can say like knights or adventure or fair, things like that, and those will show up. We can look at tags, your creations. We can look at my specific stuff. Castle stairs, castle stairs. Oh, this is castle stairs too. Ooh, this is more complicated. Kind of like that. Does that fit here next to the path? No. We can put it there though. Ooh, we have a cute garden. Oh, I like this one. This one will line up nicely next to the path. Let's do that. Okay, people are going to get on the coaster. Let's watch it load. So everyone's getting ready. And then if there were people getting off, it would let them off first. So here's the waiting 90 seconds. If it gets full before the 90 seconds is over, it's just gonna go. So there it goes. And off it goes. And then the people line up and get ready for the next time. And uh, we better get some benches and garbages in here. So for benches, we could do like thrones. That's kind of goes with the castle theme. Do a few of these throne benches. Kind of cool. And we can also do some of these nice park benches. They kind of go as well. So you want to kind of put them all throughout the park. People get tired. They want to be sitting down like immediately. They don't want to wait. Get pretty impatient. And we're also going to want to get some bins. So again, we could do this park bin. 
pop it right on the corner. You always want bins right next to the bathrooms. If people head into the washroom and they're holding something like a drink or food, uh, they will chuck that wrapper on the ground if there's no garbage. If they litter, your, um, your custodians will come and pick it up. But it's nice if they can put it in the garbage instead. So we'll continue adding more in the park. Here's our first set of people coming off the roller coaster. What did you think? Did you cry? What did you think? He didn't have to queue long. The queue was quick. So he's pretty happy. Um, some of the names, it's because there's a character named that. So this is probably an actual person um, that has Planet Coaster. Oh, we better get custodians. There's garbage on the ground. Let's get a couple of those guys to start. We're going to want one mechanic to start. And we're going to want one security guard. So security guards are going to spot thieves which is actually, I really like that game mechanic. I find it adds a lot to the game because if you're sitting there waiting for money to pile in, um, I mean, you can increase the speed of the game. That's one thing that you can do. Or um, something that's fun to do is like clicking on people and you can see their thoughts, but you can also detect thieves. So let's say there was a pickpocket in the park it would have some kind of thought there that gave us a clue that they were a pickpocket. So they would say like, I'm going to pick your pocket, which is not much of a clue. That one's pretty obvious. Um, sometimes they say, you look like a good pickpocket victim. Yeah, there we go. Okay, another pocket successfully picked. So if you see someone like this, you're gonna wanna hit eject group and the security guard will come and find them. Let's find where ours has gotten off to. So we only have one and he might be a little far away. Oh, it looks like he's already started to run for her. So that may not have been a good choice. Yeah, he's quite far. So I think I'm actually gonna hire another one, put him in front. Cause our guy will never catch up. She's really far. So that's a good thing before you hit eject you want to make sure you've got guys standing by because when they are actually in process of apprehending someone, you can't move them. You can't move them closer because sometimes they'll spot someone on their own and try to apprehend. So there's our guy chasing after her. He's caught her. He's like, Hey, you're not allowed to pickpocket people. Get out of here. And for some reason they listen. They just, they go home. They give up. They're like, okay, sir, I believe you. And we get a message saying the thief has been caught resolving one crime. Sometimes it's two, three, four, five. I think the highest I've seen is like nine. And what's nice is that it returns the money to whoever they stole it from, which is good because people get unhappy, obviously, when they lose their money. So it looks like we're already making some money, which is great. That means we can build some more rides soon. But for now, I'm going to add a few more benches. And I'm going to add some security cameras. So this is a good way to spot some thieves. And then the security guards will be able to know who to look for. So these have a radius of 15 meters. So if you picture that this path is 6 meters wide, we've probably got you know, up until about here is the range of this security camera. So we can put another one on this side. Oh, and we have something else to do. So since we have a staff uh, building, you'll notice this vendor is heading to the staff building. He is tired. He wants a break. That means we need more vendors to come and replace. So we're going to hire two more vendors and they will head for these shops. Now, since those two vendors came with those shops that we first placed down, 
they are going to be assigned to those stores, which we don't want. We want them to be free to go to any store so that if this person rests up first and is done first and this person is tired, they can just go to any store. They can go to wherever they want, especially will become important as we add more stores. All right, so look at that. Our lines are pretty full. This ride is already completely full. This ride is getting full as well. Looks like they think it's really good value. So we can increase the price. Let's go with 15 bucks for that one. How's this one doing? Uh, they're not seeing good value, so we might need to add some more decorations before they'll be willing to pay more for it. But let's add another ride. We have almost 5,000 bucks. Let's add a track ride. So track rides are kind of like calm roller coasters. They're good for kids and families. Um, it's a little boat ride or a car ride, something like that. All right, well, we've increased the, um, the price for our roller coaster. Let's maybe increase the price slightly for the food. You usually get away with another 40 or 50 cents. It's a good idea to price sync so that if you have another uh, shop in the park that's the same type, it'll charge the same thing. You don't want to have like one milkshake place here that's charging 50 cents less and a milkshake place here that's charging more and then people all try to walk over here to get the lower price. All right, let's see if our funds are still going down or if they are increasing. And we might be okay with, uh, with one custodian. Let's fire this guy for now. We just wanna get enough to get the boom boat. Oh, getting back up there, okay. We're fluctuating a bit, but we might be getting close to having enough. Uh, another way to get money in this type of thing is to get the challenges. Oh yeah, look at this. So we've already got a monthly profit from coasters, so we can claim a reward and get a thousand bucks. That's awesome. Okay. Um, this one I'm going to get rid of because we don't have hotels yet, so it's pointless to have that here. You can get up to three at a time that you're working towards. So it's no sense having that take up one of your three precious spots. All right, so we have over 5,000 bucks. We are able to now afford the boom boat. This is one of the ones that comes with the game. So let's pop that in right here. We'll squeeze it in. Awesome, and this one, I have created a custom piece of scenery that goes with it. There we go. And it's got some special effects. It's got some waterfalls here, which you can tie to the rides. So let's get this ready. We're going to get it ready to test. We're going to charge a little bit more to start. Might be able to get to 15. We're going to add some rafts. I bet we could do, let's try 12. Let's try 10. I think 10 will go through nicely. Let's wait for a full load. We'll wait up to 90 seconds. Let's make them depart more closely together. We don't want to have to wait too long. Um, I'm going to leave this for now. But if your ride is fairly quiet and you don't have new people continuously getting on, you're going to want to select Don't Block Station so that the people that are in these boats aren't just sitting here while they're waiting for new people to come on. But if you've got a busy ride with people continuously going through, you don't need to select that. I'm gonna wanna have a priority pass as well. So entrances and exits, um, these you can actually plan strategically. So the entrance is good to have over here, kind of in the middle of the little um, laneways that people will fill. So here we have four, so I'll put it right in the middle. The exit, it's good to line it up as precisely as you can with this exit here so that people can get out as quickly as possible because it waits until everyone is, af everyone is out the exit before it loads new people. So you're going to want to help get them off as quickly as you can. So we want a 
fairly short queue. They'll just come in, load the boats, and go around. You don't want to have too long of a queue. People can always come back. If you have a short queue, they can just say, okay, I'll try again later. And then they go, they get some food, something to drink, what have you, and then they come back and try again. So it's kind of a good way to do it. Um, if you're making up and down ramps or stairs, you're going to want to make sure to leave some flat space on either side. That's why I put it in the middle, because you can't put entrances and exits on the ramps. You can only put it on the flat areas. So how we link items to a ride is that we create a trigger sequence. It's the last little section on the ride. So you got to click make trigger sequence. Then you get this window, you can add a trigger, and then it's got trigger number one, and you can move it along the track. Let's leave that there. We can add a few in case we end up adding more things, but we're gonna wanna only have it at the end, so we kinda go all the way around the ride. Whee! And then let's have it be right here before they come down. Oh, and looks slightly crooked. I might need to adjust that a little. So to trigger number six, we're gonna connect objects and I'm gonna click and drag so it gets all of the objects in my little um, overpass. And it has some waterfall special effects. So we're gonna say confirm. And what that does is that when a boat comes down and hits this trigger point, it'll turn on the waterfalls and then they'll go through and then when the next boat comes, it'll turn on the waterfalls. It's a good way to make use of special effects without continuously paying for them. So a lot of them do have a cost. Uh, when you already have an object placed, you don't need to do Z to rotate and move. You can, um, what did I just do there? There, you can click on it. You can move it regularly and just have it, oh, <laughs> I'm putting water everywhere. You can move it regularly and use your Z and your whatever. Um, or when it's placed, you can use this to kind of fine tune and have advanced or placing. This is really handy if you know that you want to keep it where it is, but only move it up and down and that it's not loose and wiggling all over the place. Let's line this up a little bit better. Try to rotate it slightly. Yeah, one frustrating thing is that it has like set um, rotation points. So you can only rotate it a certain uh, a certain amount. So you might have to be content with where it is. That's one of the reasons it's it's good to do your roads on a grid as much as possible. Because if you like, probably even from this very first one that I did without a grid, it sets the whole thing slightly off. Look, let's say it put it off by like one degree this way. Um, it's going to mess with all of the uh, degrees of rotation. Oh, the boats are starting to come through. So there you go, it comes down, hits the trigger, activates the special effects. Our security guard is up and down the roads. I wish this game had a way to say like, it's just an exit, don't bother. It's kind of... um, people are gonna run around sometimes. Sometimes they'll run if they're excited to get somewhere. Like, I can't wait. Um, sometimes they're running because they're a pickpocket. So I always like to check on running people. Also, one thing with pickpockets is they are always single people that have come without a group. So these people in a group, I don't need to check them because they're never going to be a pickpocket within the group. Which makes sense because you don't want to kick out six people. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that's different is for vandals. Um, so you might have people that vandalize um, things like benches or garbages, and those people can be in a group, and then you do need to kick out the whole group when you uh, catch the vandals. That's something else that gets caught on camera. You can check your security info right here in the security management tab. It'll tell you how many pickpocket victims there have been how many pickpockets apprehended, how many vandals. Let's check on our loan. It's coming along. Um, if we start making more money, we can increase the amount we pay back. And if we make a lot of money, we can just pay off the loan and avoid uh, some of the interest. Because it is a pretty high rate of interest.
what I might do is increase this. Let's maybe try 1800 a month because we are bringing in some, some decent cash. And let's see how people are reacting to Boom Boat. There's the groups setting off, first couple of groups. Yeah, so they pass through the, the lineup pretty quickly. So there's always going to be another boat waiting to get them. Oh, what the heck? It's only a few people. Why did that leave with only two people? Uh, sometimes it depends on the groups. Like that might have been a case where there was a family of four or a group of six. People want to stay with their groups. They're not going to be split up. So if there's a family of four and there's a group of three, they're just going to let on the three and then the other people have to wait, which is too bad. But it makes sense. If I was at a park with four people, I wouldn't want to be separated from them. Oh, they were pickpocketed. There are thieves about. Is that something I can entertain myself with while I'm waiting to get more money for another ride? Ah, interesting. I have found a vendor that is wandering. So let's check on the vendors. We may be able to go down to three. Yeah, this one is just entering the shop. This one is serving customers. This one is waiting. Oh, uh, hmm. No, I don't know, because this guy is going to be tired soon. And this one's going to be leaving soon. I think, unfortunately, we still need four. But we might be able to get away with only five if we put in one more shop. Maybe we should put in a gift shop. Oh, that's the one we don't have. What was the one we did have? First aid. Okay. So maybe that's something we could research. So here's where you do all the research. You can research new coasters, different types, track rides, regular rides, and shops and facilities. Uh, let's research actually an ATM first. That's more important. It's only 100 a month, so it's not too bad. Ooh, I found the pickpocketer. Or I found a pickpocketer. I don't know if it's the same one. Um, so let's try to figure out where our security guards are before we eject this guy. Craig David. Instead of David Craig. That's kind of funny. Okay, there's a security guard. So if we eject him, he'll probably catch him there. It's funny because I saw this guy earlier and I was like, I don't know, I'm kind of suspicious. But you have to wait until they have those messages. Sometimes they only have patrol messages. You got him. Yeah, and other people who watch the pickpocketer get chased and ejected, um, they get like happiness from that. They're like, ooh, he's getting caught. He's getting in trouble. They're like, good to see um, security handling people here. Our research project is ready. Let's put an ATM machine into the park. Oh, ATM machine. No. <laughs> let's put an ATM in the machine. Let's put an ATM in the park. That's actually a pet peeve when people say the last part of acronyms. Um, do we want a gift shop or do we want an info kiosk? Let's go for gift shop first. 200 a month to research. Uh, we have 2,000 bucks now, so I think I'll put in another ride, just a regular ride. Uh, Wild Blue is a good one. Let's find a spot for that. We could put it in the middle of the road coaster, maybe. Yeah, it would fit. Where did it just go blue? It would fit there. Hmm. You know, efficient use of space. Not that we need it. I mean, we have massive amounts of space. Okay, the Wild Blue Ride is ready to go. Let's open it up. Let's start it at 12. I was able to bring this roller coaster up to 18. People were saying, good value, good value. So I could keep increasing it. In the challenge. No, let's ditch the hotel. Now, one thing you can do if your park is getting really full and people are starting to be unhappy that they can never line up for a ride, um, you can actually put a limit on the amount of people in the park. 
So here we've got a lot of people wishing there were more rides, some people complaining that the queue is full, um, there's not much scenery, they don't want to line up for that long. So right now we have 500 people in the park. So what we could do if we wanted is set a maximum on the amount of guests. And we could say, like, let's only allow 600 people into the park. And that might help a little bit because then there's room for people to be in the, the rides. So it's a temporary measure. And then as we add more rides, we can have more people. This new ride should help as well, but it's fairly extreme. Um, you, yeah, it's got nausea and fear at pretty high levels. So like kids aren't necessarily going to ride it, the family type people, but teenagers and thrill seekers, those type of people are more likely to ride it. Let's see, oh, right now they're finding it too expensive. So that we're going to want to fix. Let's put it down to 10. Um, what I was going to say with the families and different types of people, you can actually change that. So this shows you the ratios. So right now we've got 44% are adults groups, 33% are teen groups, 23% are family groups. But you can change this through marketing. So if you have the funds to do it, you can do a marketing campaign. Um, and attract more of the different types of groups, adults, teens, families. Um, TV commercials work better than print or online campaigns. Interesting thing with online campaigns is that it's divisive. So it, this one, for example, attracts more teenagers but fewer adults. This one attracts more families, fewer teens. This one attracts more adults but fewer families. So if we have the funds, we might want to do this one to bring in more adults, fewer families. Oh, our gold fever has broken down. Now that we want to attend to right away because that's bringing us tons of money. So we don't want it to be down for any longer than it has to be. Here it tells you which mechanic is en route. Uh, obviously we only have one, so it's this guy. And you click and it can tell you where he is and you can move him. So this, we want to put him as close to the exit of the ride as possible so that he can get in there, fix it, and we can reopen it. And if you watch our funds, um, the amount that it's been rising by will change dramatically and we'll probably go into the red because this has been bringing in 18 bucks a person with all of these people. And that's how many? Four times five? 20 people per ride. That was a lot of money every time this ride left the station. So yeah, we're already in the red because we are not keeping up with our costs. We still have to pay our employees, even though this ride is not making us any money. So we'll get it fixed as soon as we can, get it back on, back on track, running again. What you can do uh, for those rides that are really important, your best rides, your money-making rides, is you can set them to have maintenance more often. So this one, we could say, you know what, check it every 10 minutes. Uh, we wanted to have as few breakdowns as possible. And if it's getting old, we can also request a refurbishment um, to kind of fix those wear and tear issues. Woo! These are all these people that were people that were in the middle of getting out of the lineup um, because we want to reopen it. It just spat them all out at the exit um, because now it's open for people to come in. So that was a lot of people and now we're not getting their money. So it has gone down by like all of their money. So these people probably paid, I think you get the money when they come in. They pay this, this robot here. Um, also looks like someone has vandalized this trash can. That sucks. Uh, we don't have the money to replace it. Aww. That sucks. Okay, well let's hope people head towards this ride so we can make our money back. Oh, and if we, we have reached our 600 guests, so it's gonna stay at that cap. Won't let in any more people, we're pretty full. Our queues are full. Uh, still not too many people going on this. Do we think it's expensive? Yes. I'm gonna reduce this further, get some people lining up there. Uh, one thing about pickpockets is that they don't go on rides. 
So they will just continue to walk around. So sometimes you can tell if most people are enjoying your ride and it's taking as many people as possible and one person turns away, they might be a pickpocket. You can also tell if they are walking in weird areas of the park because they're not necessarily going to uh, have the same patterns of like, I want to go to this ride, now I want to go to this ride. Um, it'll say that on their guest information. It'll say that they're heading for a ride, but since they're not going to take that ride, sometimes they have kind of messed up traveling patterns. So if I saw someone over here, for example, that wasn't a security guard um, or custodian, they would be a pickpocket. So there's no reason for guests to be over here right now. Now that the ride is open again, we are making back our money pretty quickly. All good things come to an end, even theme park trips and even videos about theme parks come to an end. Uh, let's take a look at our research. Eh, we have a gift shop. All right, well, let's pop that in and then we'll, we'll say goodbye. I think I'm going to put it here in the middle. People don't like to buy gifts when they're right at the beginning of their park time. They like to, um, you know, have some fun first and then go for it. Let's choose a nice structure for it. Oh, that's cute. Okay, well, let's try this and we'll put a gift shop in and then maybe we can also put a bathroom in later on. Let's do this. That'll help this ride as well. All right. We're going to edit the building to add the shop. Pick the hats fantastic. Rotate it around. Plunk it down right on the ground level. And this will give you a little preview of building. But in the next Planet Coaster episode, we'll go over building in more detail. There are tons of options. There are other new, different blueprints as well that we didn't see in the shops because some of them are full buildings. Uh, you can also have the search option, which will help us find our castle themed pieces. So here they are, and we're gonna pick a shop entrance. You can also narrow it down by types. So if we want castle walls, just do this. There it is. Castle wall, shop front, I'm going to rotate it, plunk it on down, there we go. So next time we'll do a little more building in detail. We'll add a hat sign for our shop, lovely. And we'll have it to advertise the shop and we can't forget every time we add a new shop, let's say done. Every time we add a new shop, we're going to make sure that we set our staff member to free roaming so that we're not limited in who can work where. Let's try it with five people. I think that should be enough having two people extra to rotate on through. So it's time to say goodbye. All good things must come to an end. We are in the green again, in the black again. So that's a good thing. We can start saving up more money and add another coaster, which would be fun. Let's ride our coaster as we say farewell. I hope you've enjoyed this special episode on the Gamer Mom channel. And I hope to see you on Thursday for another Cowboy Colony episode of RimWorld with version 1.3 and the Ideology Expansion. Queer mom hugs going out to anyone who needs them. Take care. Bye-bye.